Yeah. As we promised, we have Dr. Alvinia Fulton here. Welcome to City Line. So glad you could come into Baltimore. Yes. I love Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Great. Dr. Fulton is a Chicago nutritionist who has uh, advised such people as Dick Gregory, Roberta Flack, and some others. And uh, in reading the material on you, Dr. Fulton, you've said that uh, we could prolong our lives by as much as 20 years yes. if we practice fasting. Well, That's you know correct. I'm interested. Tell me how I can do it. Well, without supervision, you could start and do it one day every week. And the best day to do it is after the weekend. And when we've eaten over the weekend and Sunday, then Sunday night, start with an herbal laxative. It doesn't matter what brand. You can find them at health food stores, grocery stores, supermarkets and all. And you take that herb laxative, be it a tea, capsule, or tablet, Sunday night. Monday morning, get up and take that laxative again. And then all day, drink either water or juice. So what, what is this doing? This is resting the body organs. And it is cleansing, resting and cleansing, and a process of healing. Because sometimes we have, after the weekend of eating or any other time, we have a lot of gas and bloat and heartburn and all. This would clear all of that. Dr. Fulton, I just want to remind everybody at home that you can join in our discussion by calling us at 481-1313. As usual, City Line is live, and uh, uh, Dr. Fulton is waiting to talk to you. But I yes, want to I love you, it. Before, before the phones get too busy, <laughs> I want to... I want, I want to ask you, I mean, you, you, you have a very unusual black background. You're a, a woman of a lot of firsts. Uh, yes. As, as, I, as I understand it, you are the first black woman to be an AM, uh, first woman to be an AME minister. minister. In, in, in the state of Alabama. Okay, but you're, in, I mean. In, in North, I, now, wait. I was first to graduate from the seminary <laughs> among, among uh, 27 ministers. Many of them was older than I was. And uh, first to join the North Alabama Conference and the first to pastor in Alabama. Okay, now, but, 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 and I don't want to be pejorative to ministers, but, but how, how does ministry, I mean, you know, ministers have to go to chicken dinners an awful lot. How does ministry fit into, into fasting? Well, uh, I tell them that they will live longer and give better service to their congregations and their congregations will be health, healthier and have more money to put in the collection plate or pay dues with if they were healthier <laughs> by the way they eat. How did you get started with all of this, the fasting and so forth, and become such a, a devotee of fasting? Well, you see, before I started this, I had been traveling many years as an evangelist in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And you know, when you're a visitor in town or you're a minister or you're a guest, people just feed you, feed you, and feed you. And I came down with ulcers. And when I came down from ulcers, I learned from Dr. Garnet, uh, his report, Dr. Garnet Cheney of Stanford University in California, that ulcers could be healed with raw cabbage juice. Now, that does not mean sauerkraut juice. It does not mean cooked juice. It means raw juice, uh, cabbage, take, take put a into cabbage a blender, and, juice, it. and, and uh -huh. juice the cabbage, and you drink uh, a glass full before breakfast, a glass full before uh, lunch, uh, glass, I mean, yes, b before, uh, which is between, and glass full before dinner at night, and a glass full of uh, this cabbage juice on going to bed at night. You, the first night day I drank that, I slept better that night than I had slept in many years because I did not have to wake up in the night with a painful stomach. And anyone knows ulcers, it's very painful. Did it heal? Did oh, it yes, heal the ulcers ulcer? healed in two weeks. Now, were you eating Which anything had, other than the cabbage juice? Yes, I was eating uh, the, the, what is called the, the bland diet. Because that's what... Uh, the, the diet that the doctors prescribe for ulcers. Yes, uh -huh. uh, and, and which also uh, makes you put on a lot of weight because they have you drinking all that uh, cream, you know, that mm -hmm. half and half and cream because that would coat the ulcer and, uh, when you drink that and it, would, uh, it was uh, promoting a kind of a healing. Now, I had had these ulcers for about 12 years and that quarter cabbage juice for two weeks... Heal the ulcer, and I have not had the uh, uh, ulcer since. Now, this turned me around, and I went back to school because Dr. Um, Dr. Uh, Max Gerson, uh, Max uh, Gardner, I mean, not Gerson. <laughs> Gerson is the man for uh, cancer. Uh, uh, Dr. Max uh, uh, Gardner, is Gardner mm -hmm. told me that I started me fasting. And uh, after I had the uh, 
healing of the ulcers also has another problem that uh, needed correction, which was a fibroid. And that was uh, more than 30 years ago. And when I told him about this, he said, uh, now, you've gotten rid of your ulcers. Now, if you want to get really well, go on a fast and a vegetarian diet. It was the first time I'd really heard of vegetarian diet because uh, I'd always eaten plenty of meat. And so do you, do you couple the two things, the fasting and the vegetarianism? Yes, yes. Now, I, I, I don't, uh, for everyone, if one wants to be a vegetarian, I say this, that a vegetarian live longer, have better health, less cancer, and, and I understand certainly. they love longer. And they live cool? longer, and certainly they spend less money for food. Well, what about <laughs> love longer? Oh, then that's what it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's what it is. We're going to talk more about living and loving longer when we come back from this that's break. That's right. <laughs> or call us for further information at 466-0013 between the hours of 9 and 5. We're back on City Line, and our guest is Dr. Alvinia Fulton, who is the first accredited black doctor of naturopathy. Na naturopathy. Naturopathy. I knew I was going <laughs> to blow that. And, and also the first black woman uh, AME minister. And we've got a phone call, Dr. Fulton. Indeed. Hi, you're live on City Line. Hi, Jackie. My name is Carolyn. And I want to know, um, is it, uh, we have thyroid and it's hereditary in our family. And I want to know, is it any type of uh, foods that, uh, that we could eat that maybe to prevent it or tell our, kid, our girls in our family or other people in our family for thyroid. Thyroid. Uh -huh. we, uh, <laughs> Eat. Let Dr. Fulton yes. respond. Yes, uh, families eat alike. That's why it's hereditary. Families eat alike. Now, you will have to change some of the things you eat. And uh, I could tell you that best if you wrote to me or called me in Chicago because uh, there are herbs also. And then the. Uh, Give us a general type uh, of thing that she should be eating as a thyroid uh, victim or uh, with just uh, plenty of vegetables and less meat and less starches. And that's why I was going to bring up the herbs. Vegetables are also herbs. So if she was eating more vegetables and uh, using also less sugar, but was using molasses, which would also give you a, a plenty of potassium to help balance the minerals in your body. And uh, if and st instead of drinking the uh, the cola drinks or whatever the uh, the bottled drinks, mm -hmm. I say mm -hmm. bottled and canned drinks, if you were drinking more fruit or vegetable juices that are fresh that you make, uh, uh, something simple that you can still do, uh, canned, uh, uh, you could drink canned tomato juice or vegetable juice. You see, your system needs a vegetable. One thing, remember this, animals do not have that kind of problem, and it is because of the way they eat. Okay, Dr. Okay. Fulton, thank you. That's We've got a question from the audience. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, Dr. Fulton, my name is Eleanor Richardson, and I'm certainly interested in prolonging my lifespan and uh, being as healthy as I possibly can. So I would like to get from you some pointers on how can one certainly start on a, a fasting and to stick to it. Good question. Well, <laughs> good. I'll never do more than one day or uh, two days fasting without supervision. Uh, but one thing you can do without supervision is one day at a time. And I would suggest every week, it would, it would be better to fast one day every week than to go on a fast of some days at a time not supervised. So the one day every week would be starting Sunday night after you've been eating over the weekend, and you know how we do that, and then take an herb laxative. The next morning when you get up, take the herb laxative, and it can come in three different forms. It came as a tea, a tablet, or a capsule. And then all day long, drink water or juice. You will not be hungry during that day. The body does not do two things at the same time. It will not hunger for food while you're eliminating the waste and the acid and toxins from your body. Okay. Thank now, you for uh, the question. We're going to take a phone call from home right now. Hi, do you want to talk to Dr. Fulton? Uh, yes, I do. 
My experience has been that um, when I fast for a prolonged period, after the fourth day I develop a sore throat and sniffles and other um, signs of a cold. I'd like to know how that can be resolved and also what the benefits of a colonic are. And I'm going to hang up and uh, listen to uh, the answers <laughs> to my question. Well, thank you for calling. Now, that is not a cold. That's the body eliminating the mucus, the toxins, and waste. Uh, that you experience. Sounds like a textbook case, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. But on the other hand, when you do that, it means that you didn't prepare that fast correctly. A uh, fast should be done by preparation. You should cleanse the body, as I said before, with uh, herb laxative. And you can do that as many as five days in a row. But if you're going more than uh, Oh, one or two days. Be sure you see a doctor or a nutritionist to supervise you. Do not do it alone. You will call damage to your system okay, if you do it alone. And she also asked about the colonic. Colonics, yes. But the colonic, uh, e even that, a colonic therapist. You might have to describe uh, we, well, what it is. Yes, a colonic therapist is when one is on the table and the uh, therapist or doctor, whoever it uh, might be, uh, uh, gives you washing out the colon and this is what one needs and uh, if you have colonics enough correctly you would prevent having the uh, colostomy bags which more than eight million of us in America have and that's because the colon got too full and it literally deteriorated had to be cut away and a colostomy bag put in the side. Okay yeah. another question from the audience yes sir. Good evening um, my name is Marlon Dorsey and um, I'm an athlete and um, I don't eat meats, and my mom's wanting to know why I don't, and um, I want to know how could I keep my weight up. I be playing ball every day, and I guess to lose weight, and then I go and stuff myself, and I don't think, I think that's not right, and I want to know how can I control, you know, without coming back after playing ball, and sometimes I don't even eat, and when you, I do eat, fail. I eat too much. So yeah. you're going from one extreme to the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even when you're going from that extreme to the other, it's good to know how to get your protein. Yeah, I eat soybean. Well, that's good. If you're okay. eating soybean, other grain, and nuts and seed, and many times you would need to grind up the nuts and make them into the form of a milk. Okay. Like, for instance, if you take almonds or whatever nut, uh, grind them into a powder before you add water, and for one cup of nuts, you add three cups of water, then you add a teaspoon of vanilla, and about two tablespoons full of honey, and presto, that's the best milk you could drink. And right. plus, it's high in protein. Thank you. That's I'm interesting, because sure. a lot of people think that you're fasting just to lose weight. He's got no, no. the opposite problem. To, yeah. to keep yeah. your health. The right. best way to keep your health up is to fast. Good, you know, we, you. we do have a love affair with meat in this country, don't we? Yes, we do. And you think meat is bad for us? Uh, there are more than one way and more than one aspect of meat being bad. Number one, meat takes from, th uh, from 5 to 13 hours to digest. We don't eliminate it enough, and plus the fact we wrap it up with starch, eating starches. And so here you've got a conflict going on in the colon with too much starch and too much protein. Uh, if we had more vegetables with it, it wouldn't be quite as bad, but it is bad because of the, the, the chemicals that is put into meat. But okay. Dr. Fulton, I, I mean, I really want to believe and do what you're mm -hmm. recommending. But there's nothing to me that's, that's, that smells better than a steak in the oven, I mean, cooking. Only I mean, you know, because I, of the seeds I mean, you the, put it, in. It must be the psychological. It's psychological, um, but only because you put I, the But how do you get away from it. the psychological? Yeah, take the seasoning out that you smell, the onions, the garlic, and tomatoes, and green peppers and stuff. That's what you're smelling. But can I eat those meat. separately? Eat them separately, that's better. That's better. No. So you start thinking the about getting a smell that good. It. It's, it's what you season it with. It's okay, let's good. take a quick call from home. I think someone else has a comment or a question. Hi, do you want to talk to Dr. Fulton? Yes, I do. Dr. Fulton, I fast at least once a month for four to five days, and I drink distilled water and I take enemas. But now I have reason to believe that I'm expected. Is there any danger in fasting when you're pregnant? One day at a time, no. No danger in one day at a time, but do not go on a prolong without the advice of your doctor. She should talk okay. to a doctor, though. Talk to your doctor, even for that one day. And thank you. And what you consume during that one day. Okay, we've got another question from the audience. Quickly, yes, please. Dr. Fulton, I was wondering if uh, fasting or vegetarian diet causes headaches or faintness. Does vegetarian diet cause headaches or faintness? No. It's a toxic waste in the body that causes that. Now, if you'd go on a cleansing, as I mentioned before, you would not have that. Yeah. 
I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to be like Dan. Reggie's I'm going to rebel. Ask your question later. That's okay. <laughs> I'm going to rebel. Dr. Alvinia Fulton is our guest, and she's talking about fasting and the benefits therein. But, Dr. Uh, Fulton, Fasting is not really admired by the medical community in, in this country, is it? I mean, there are a lot of uh, medics who are against fasting, aren't they? Well, they're against, uh, against our procedure. Every medical man in the country does fasting. But you think, uh, putting you on IV is, you're not eating. <laughs> yes, that's but true. That's a form of I mean, fasting. Why, why, are they, why are they against uh, fasting? Well, they don't understand the procedure this way, you know. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. They fast everybody. Does it stop them from Going pushing pills, though? Does it, does it, it cut down on that? Yes, it would cut down. Cut down on, on the income a little bit? Yes, think? it would probably cut down on that. Too. I guess the food manufacturers hate you, too, don't they? <laughs> yes, yes. They, it, <laughs> it, it would cut on the economy a little bit. <laughs> okay, Let's go to the phones. <laughs> okay, we're going to take another call from home. Hi, you're live on City Line. Hi, my father is a newly diagnosed diabetic, and I was wondering if he could fast one day a week safely. Yes, he could fast one day a week, and it would be best if he had a doctor to supervise him through a fast like we've had in Chicago when diabetics were fasted uh, as much as uh, uh, three weeks a month and corrected their weight and also their diabetes. Remember this, diabetics, uh, unless they're supervised correctly at all, they will lose their sex, and it's best for them to fast so they can keep their health and their love life. Well, spe well speaking of sex and, uh, and loving longer, as I started out the show, how does fasting help in that area? Fasting helps because it helps one to have a nice, sweet disposition. Is that and the When you have reason? a nice, sweet disposition, <laughs> you, you look good, you feel good, you smell good, because when you fast, you, I've, I've you get that. I've heard people say that, that people do. who fast or people who are on, on non-meat diets actually smell better. They do smell better because, you see, the, the vegetables uh -huh. don't stay in your body long enough to have that waste uh, buildup that we call halitosis and body odor. Uh, vegetarians don't have that. So they have a sweet disposition, personality, attitude, and they can smile when other people are frowning. <laughs> okay, we got a question <laughs> from the audience. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Fulton, I would like to know, how does fasting affect the nutritional balance of foods? Uh, such as uh, how, how do we compensate for meats? In other words, you know, is it, is it an equal balance of the food groups? If you, uh, if you select your food right. Now remember, no animal that we eat, eats eat meat. They eat gray and grass. Uh, vegetables off the trees, off the uh, plants, this is what they eat. The cows, the pigs, they don't eat meat. And so if we ate the vegetables, and, and ate enough beans, peas, and grain, uh, and soy bean is higher in protein than any meat is. Mm -hmm. And so if we uh, knew how to select our food and was supervised and selected our food correctly, we would have what we need from the food. You know, it's, it's interesting it that you should say supervised because I have known some people who have uh, been vegetarians and who fasted quite uh, often, and they've really run into some physical problems. They've had problems with their teeth. Yes. And, and, and with some other parts of the body. So it, it can be dangerous, can't it? It can be unless one is supervised. That's why I said if persons go fast more than one day at a time, don't do it unless you have a doctor or someone who's experienced in this to supervise you. Okay. Unless you got somebody who's taking a look at you at the whole time. Yes, you know? it, you okay. must be supervised every day when We're you're We're going to go to the phones again. Hi, caller. You're live on City Line. Yes. Um, what I wanted to know is if you're nursing a newborn baby, what effects the one-day diet and the vegetation diet would have on the baby? The vegetarian diet would be all right, but I wouldn't fast again, I'd say, unless you had the supervision of the doctor. You must consider the baby's condition, the baby's need comes from the mother's breast. Okay, That's another question good. from the audience. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Dr. Fulton, I'd like to know, at what age would you suggest to begin this fasting process and would kids, say, under 12, be too young to begin this fasting? No, start with any age when they're uh, old enough for you to say, we're going to play a game. 
we're going to just drink this juice all day. We're going to drink a cup of tea. You have not been drinking tea all along, but you're going to drink a cup of tea with mom and daddy. We're going to have this game. We're going to play this game all day long. We're just going to drink this tea and this juice all day <laughs> So, so the, the child will say, Monday or whatever day is, is our game day that we play games when we eat. And they'll get used to it, Dr. one day at a time. Dr. Fulton, there are an awful lot of hungry people in the world. And I guess just in the back of my mind is, is, is we've done shows on, on hunger in Baltimore, hunger in the world. Uh, I mean, how, how do you, I, I don't know how you equate mm -hmm. hunger and the fact that people can't afford to buy food with, with fasting. I mean... Yes, uh, that is true. But you see, there's more plants and uh, roots in the earth that would be food also if people knew how to gather this and use it. I guess maybe there's a way in which we can translate the... the there's the, a way the, you can translate. You see, man first ate fruit, roots, herbs, bark, and berries, bark from the trees. Unfortunately, we are out of time, and I know I, I would want to talk to you for at least another half hour on television, and maybe another two or three hours afterwards, but you're going to be back in this area sometime soon in a public forum, right? Yes, and... Uh, and a health expo in the Sheraton in um, in Washington, Washington D.C. The third and fourth. Third and fourth of I'll March. I'll be speaking on the on the fourth, but I will be there. I will arrive on the third of March. Okay, Fantastic. we have that so on people the screen. Can people can catch you there. Yes. Okay. Also, also, uh, people can write to you in Chicago, right? Yes. Uh, write me at box two one three six seven six zero oh, six twenty one. Box two one three six seven. 60621, Dr. A. Fulton. Chicago, Illinois. Chicago, Illinois. Okay, we've enjoyed talking to you today. I think that you've tickled our I fancies here. It, and we're kind of interested in following up on what you've said about fasting. Yes. And those of you who'd like to see her in person, don't forget the uh, session that'll be held in Washington in March. We'll be back in a moment with T. Montier in the news.